decorations. We're here for Spooka Palooza. It is rainy outside, but it doesn't matter. We're going to have fun anyway. So we're going to go in and talk to Dakota and get the scoop on what's happening. I'm here with Dakota, and he's going to tell us a little bit about where we're at right now. Uh, well, this is Ravenwood Coffee and Creations. It's a shop that my husband and I own right now um, that was originally started up by my mother and I. Um, we basically started off under a tent, uh, humble beginnings, but because of the love of the community and supporting us, we've kind of escalated <laughs> to where we are today. Um, so because of the support that the community has received us, uh, we have reached out to them and we've been trying to do our best to help them as well. Um, local vendors, we allow them to sell stuff in our shop as well. We have like vendor spaces and everything. Um, and then we also try to hold um, events like we had today, which was our very first Palooza, which was a big vendor fair, which went fantastically from what I heard. Uh, we had a bunch of different things. We had people selling food. We had some food trucks out here. But we try to promote a family atmosphere, but not just your average everyday family, but any family. No matter what background you have, what religious beliefs you have, or even what orientations you may have. We are welcoming and we are here for you and we have coffee. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Um, today I noticed a bunch of different beliefs, uh, people with all different spiritual backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Do you mind talking about yours a little bit, what your spiritual background is? I kind of just identify as the umbrella term of just pagan because I'm currently still doing a lot of research into the different paths. I've looked into um, Norse paganism, Wicca, a bunch of other different stuff. Um, so I guess you might say more eclectic. Um, but yeah, I started looking into it when I was in high school and my mom uh, was looking into it too just to make sure it was safe. You know, you hear your kids in the paganism. Sometimes there's that stigma at first, unfortunately, but she actually fell into it too. And so now we looked into it together, then my brother got into it, and my husband is now too. And so yeah, we've been getting into that community, we're friends with everyone at Valhalla's Gate. Um, and I know Samantha has told me about a bunch of different events, like um, I think it's Dragonheart or Dragonfest, one of the two options. <laughs> but yeah, um, no matter what your religious or spiritual faith is, we welcome you here, whether it be any branch of faith. Christianity, Jewish. Everybody, everybody's Everybody. welcome. Your faith so, is valid. let me ask you a question out here in Clarksville. Is there any challenges that you find as far as um, your belief system, or is it pretty welcoming as far as paganism? Um, everything that I've experienced has actually been um, not really all that negative. Um, about the only thing is like when I was in high school, I was walking around with my uh, pentacle, and I had people ask me if I was Jewish, and <laughs> obviously I would explain to them that what it actually was and the difference between them, and I also was afforded an opportunity in college when my speech class I gave a whole presentation about basically the misconceptions of paganism and that was actually received very well I had a lot of people ask me questions I was able to draw on the board and show them the differences between certain symbol symbols and stuff like that and everyone wasn't really that negative about it they were all very intrigued and curious because oh, okay. no one's actually ever talked to them about it like that oh that's good okay that's interesting well I'm going to take a look at the little wares you've got over here mm -hmm. and show everybody how unique your coffee shop is awesome well thank you very much thank you okay bye one of these wares are by local vendors We have local artists, art. This is Tiny the Dragon. This is the shop's pet. The list of drinks and options are endless. My name's Tim Samsel. I'm with Smoking Tree Acrylics. Uh, I do uh, wood burning and I do acrylic work. Um, and this is some of the things that I do. Um, here's some bowls. I do uh, I make these lamps. Here's a, a spirit board that I made. These are real uh, skulls in there. 
porcupine quills, uh, feathers. Here's a big bowl that I did. So, yeah, that's what I do. I do it as a hobby, not a business. Um, everybody tells me to keep, you know, ask me for cards and business cards and stuff, and I, I just, I wish I could do it full time, but I just don't have the time to do it because I have another job I have to go to. But I enjoy doing it, and sometimes I do um, commission work when I got the time. So, um, how do we get in touch with you? Uh, Facebook? Facebook is fine. Uh, it'll be under uh, Tim Samso. Okay, great. And we can get you through Atlanta Moonfire as well. Correct. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Tim, so I have a question for you. Um, what do you think happens after we die? After you die, what I feel, um, there's new souls and there's old souls. And the, the new souls, I guess, you're, you're, you're on this planet to learn, okay? And I feel that if you're a newer soul, you, that you'll be reincarnated and brought back here until you are, I guess the word would be, enlightened. And then you, you keep repeating that until, I guess, you get enlightened and then you can move on to another realm. I ain't going to say it's heaven or hell, because I don't know. Nobody knows. But um, the Hindus, they believe that too, that you, you get reincarnated and stuff. Um, so I kind of feel that's the way it is. Um, the older souls, um, do they get reincarnated and brought back here? Probably, but not as much. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's how I kind of feel about it. You, you, you got to learn, I guess, the mistakes in all your past life to move on. So, that's how I feel about what happens to you after you pass away. That sounds amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you. Blessed be. You too. Bye-bye. Okay, hi, we're here at Spookapalooza in Clarksville, Tennessee, and this is Danielle Galvin. Hi, Danielle, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> so, when you think of magical moments, what comes to mind? So, the first thing that comes to mind for me is um, before I started my business, before I even had the idea of starting a business, I was just doing a meditation of like speaking with my ancestors and listening for advice from them. And they actually gave me an exact recipe, full ingredients, full name of a product. Um, and it's actually one of the ones that I sell. It's my ears balm. And um, it was very clear and concise. And they even told me like which ingredients need to be wildcrafted and everything to put in it. And that one product um, kind of led me to developing the idea for my business. And um, being able to okay. see that the life that I want is actually attainable as being like a homesteader and growing my own herbs and being able to teach herbalism to the community and help people be able to help themselves. So that is like the best magical moment that has happened for me, like developing my business and my passion through my ancestors. That's beautiful. I work with ancestors. So that's, I did not know that, um, that you worked with ancestors. Yes. So that's really amazing. Um, okay, can you kind of tell us just a little bit about your stuff? So yes. let me get your sign in here. And yeah, definitely tell us a little bit about what you have. Yeah, so um, I am a herbal herbalist. My business is Herbaceous Goods. I sell everything from teas to alcohol extracts, body oils, salves. Uh, I also do custom formulations and I teach herbalism as well. And I teach herbalism from a, like, traditional medicinal standpoint, but also 
a magical standpoint as well to use herbs within whether it's witchcraft or um, for manifestation, all sorts of things. Okay, well that's fantastic. I'm going to take a couple more shots of your stuff. And um, I thank you for your time. Blessed be. Thank you. Okay, we're here with Jim, and we're at Athens Pagan Pride. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Well, uh, Athens Pagan Pride Day, we were part of the, affiliated with the National Pagan Pride Project. Uh, the first Athens Pagan Pride Day was organized by a woman named Christian Avalon back in 2008. And the next year, she decided she couldn't do it again. And she approached, uh, at that time, we had uh, Athens Area Pagans Incorporated as an organization. Me and Michelle Foley had formed back in 2005, and we knew Christian. She came to us and said, "We would like. I, I wish someone would keep Adams Bacon Pride Day going. Will you? Will you, mainly Michelle, take over?" And Michelle Foley is our, our local board. She's kind of the big boss of this group. She's not here right now. Uh, no, she's been here since the Kraka, before the Kraka Dog Day. Uh, so we took over organizing uh, Athens Pagan Pride Day in 2009, and we have had some form of it every year since then, although in 2020 we tried to do an online version in conjunction with Atlanta, and that didn't really work very well. Last year we couldn't get a permit and uh, wound up doing it on some land we owned. Very informal, but we are back in downtown Athens for the first time in three years. I just, I don't know. What else do you want to know? <laughs> That's just fantastic. What is the pagan community like out here? Athens. And they always say that, that organizing pagans is like herding cats, but in Athens <laughs> it's worse than that because although there's lots of pagans and witches and such running around, most of them have a are extremely averse to actually joining any organized groups whatsoever. So, Athens is in a way a very pagan friendly town, but it's very hard to get more than a few people to sit down and organize something. <laughs> so we're constantly looking for new people. Uh, we were desperately trying to get people. I, I am, what, 13 years older than I was when we first started doing this, and it feel, I'm feeling it today. Oh. But, uh, but we have some people. Um, we need our group, Athens Area Pagans. Was, we conceived it originally not to be any specific pagan pet, but to be like a, a social network or a clearinghouse. And we did get we did get 501c3 religious uh, tax exemption in 2013. And so we're doing a lot of things. We have a, our own uh, cloud servers that we own. Uh, internal communication system, well, while we were putting on yoga classes and things of that sort, but technically we don't represent any particular faith. Now, there is, the River Temple of Athens is sort of an adjunct group, which is a, I, would, I describe it as an eclectic Wiccan circle. We do uh, rituals regularly, and pretty much the same people who are the core of the AAP. That's fantastic. Okay, well, thank you so much for taking a few minutes and letting me interview you. And, well, we're going to get back to the... Well, let the me say one other thing, okay. if I might. Absolutely. If anyone wants to meet us, we meet every Saturday except when there are special events. But otherwise, every Saturday at 5 p.m. at Rabbit Hole Studios on Wonderville Road in Athens. And anyone can come to those. Okay, what time is that? 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Okay, thank you so much, Jim. Thank you. Blessed be. Glad you're here. Blessed be. We're here with Angela at Athens Hi. Pagan Pride, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about spirituality. Yeah, so I was getting into spirituality and paganism and whatnot as a way to maintain mental health after I came out of a massive depression, and it really spoke to me how you could, um, well, A, get away from the very Christian part of your family, because, you know, my grandfather was my preacher, uh, but still also say you were a good person, because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're raised like, Christians are the good people, ah, and it's not the best, but, uh, yeah, I was looking for something to help me, you know, keep me out of depression, 
and then I got into the new agey stuff, which I guess a lot of people come into paganism through the crystals and the you know, peace, love, and light, because that's what I needed at the time, because I'd just come out of a massive bit of darkness, and I needed that balance of the very positive, and that really helped me. And then I kind of settled out into something now, which is a lot more nature-based. Um, I have been told, you sound very Buddhist. <laughs> or I like, I particularly like to focus on how we all fit into the energetic system or just, you know, life, because we're all part of this big old network. And can't really take yourself out of that because it's basically everything you do affects someone else or affects other things and then other people affect you and that's kind of how I view things. Everything is this big energetic web that we're all part of. Oh. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, you asked about uh, spirit guides a little while back. I don't have spirit guides so much but I do sometimes tap in just to see what's in the area. Like different places around town, you'll definitely feel different energies uh, around the intramural fields up in the woods behind that, behind Lake Eric. There's a really old, very deep seated energy there. Uh, when I was doing deliveries for AutoZone, I was a delivery driver, parts driver, and had you know 300 miles of routes that I would go. I somehow tapped into a spirit that watches over transportation and kind of got into a relationship with that entity and would occasionally give it offerings like, we're going on the long run today, how you doing? <laughs> we're doing good, I'll look after you, you look after me. So that was fun, that was a very friendly, friendly spirit. Um, interestingly enough, I was thinking about this the other day, my grandfather's churches is the Old Line Baptist and they rotate churches every Sunday. They all have different energy and different spirits around them, which is also very interesting. So I don't have particular guides, but I do like to tap in and see what energies and what spirits are there. That's interesting. So have you always worked with spirits, like from a young age, or is this something new? I want to say not necessarily from a young age, um, because I was very stuck in the there is one God and there is one way of things and didn't really tap into things but that sort of approach never sat well with me and I struggled so much uh, so and I was always into fantasy so <laughs> <laughs> that, that was uh, what I always was drawn to so no it was definitely once I got into my early 20s that I started looking at other things and being able to tap into energy and see different things that's amazing. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Oh, hey. Do you want to do you want to be interviewed too? <laughs> Seems like that. <laughs> <I'm out. laughs> well, thank you so much for letting me interview you and um, I so appreciate it and blessed be. We're here with Inot at Athens Pagan Pride. And she's going to tell us a little bit about her spirituality. What is your spirituality, your practice? I am wicked. Okay. And can you elaborate a little bit on that, about your um, your belief system? Okay. Well, we are an earth-based religion. Um, we pretty much believe in all the gods, goddesses. We practice love. We practice balance. We incorporate all of the elements in our rituals and in our spells. And... Um, we're really good people, despite what people think on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are you part of a coven? I am. Okay, are you able to talk about that a little bit? Um, I am part of Witches of Moon Rock Mountain. We are a coven just outside of Covington, Georgia. Um, we're a pretty new coven. Our priest, Lord Lucian, is a practicer. Is, well, he is a priest of three different religions. Um, Wicca being his most recent priesthood. And um, we have a beautiful thing out there. Um, we have the, well, Lord Lucian and his partner have 90 acres and completely off grid. And um, basically do our practicing out there. And it is very magical lands. 
Beautiful, perfect. Okay, and you said this is in Covington, Georgia? It's just outside of Covington, yes. What is the pagan community like out in Covington? Is it big? Is it small? I wouldn't say that it's big. I don't really think it's very talked about. Um, it's still Georgia. <laughs> it's still the country of Georgia, even though paganism and Wicca is a huge, a largely grown religion right now. Um, I don't think they talk about, talk about it as much. So, okay, as far as Wiccan, there's a lot of people out there that don't understand the difference between being a witch, being Wiccan, you know, how you can be a witch, you can be Wiccan, what's the difference? Do you understand what I'm, I'm asking? Can you explain that a little bit better for me, please? Okay, so you can practice Wicca, but until you are a first degree initiate, you are not termed a witch. Um, you can practice Wicca, you can practice paganism, and you can be dedicated as a pagan, but technically... In Wicca, in my religion, you are not a witch until you have your first degree initiation. Okay, so the people that you, um, and I'm just asking because I'm ignorant, okay, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the Wiccan religion, okay, I have only, only know what I've read. Um, so if somebody's out there and they're reading books on Wicca and they're practicing witchcraft, technically they're not considered... A witch yet is that correct or can they self-initiate I mean do you see where I'm going with this I mean technically the way our heaven is we are not concerned with titles okay um, a lot of Wiccan covens are and a lot of them are very to the book um, we are not as concerned with titles as much as it is what's in your hearts and what's in your intent um, yeah if buy a lot of books technically I guess you could be considered a witch and you could initiate yourself um, but what are those books are you buying four or five different books um, written by different practitioners what um, you know what is it what actual religion is it that they are teaching you because there are variations of paganism there's variations of wicca um, just like any other religion just like christianity just like you know any other religion so um, i believe it's more what you believe inside but if you want to get technical with <laughs> with it <laughs> then um technically under um a larger covenant, you wouldn't be considered uh, a witch unless you've initiated to those levels. Okay, that's yeah. what I was curious about. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, well, thank you so much for letting me interview you, and Absolutely. it was so good to meet you here at Athens Pagan Pride. All right, thank you. And blessed be. And blessed be. We're here at Magic City Conjure in Birmingham, Alabama, and okay, so why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Nathan Altina. I work here at Magic City Conjure. I've been working here for a while. Well, good. It's good to meet you. And um, I have a question for you, Nathan. So what do you think a life well-lived is? Um, I would say a life that is well-lived is where you have a huge sense of self-fulfillment. Um, personally, I... I always thought you know, a life well lived was being obedient and having a purpose, but after a while, I really don't think there is that much of a purpose if you don't sense that much of a purpose. Um, I'm just kind, giving, and I use my gut in a lot of situations, and if it feels good, then I feel like I have fulfilled my purpose in that situation. Um, like I could probably die tomorrow and I still would feel happy because I feel fulfilled today. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. What do you think the one most issue facing humanity today is? That is honestly a really, really tough question to answer without someone else taking it political. Um, the first thing that pops into my head is acceptance. People today have a hard time accepting their truths, 
accepting certain realities, accepting their failures, um, accepting pretty much everything. Acceptance is one thing that humanity has always struggled with and action is not something that a lot of people are willing to do because they aren't willing to accept things. Wow, I agree. Well, thank you, Nathan, so much. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time out and let me bug you and ask you some questions. So, yeah. blessed be. Blessed be.